right, and welcome to the Game 2 News Conference of the NCAA Knoxville Super Regional. We are joined by Tennessee head coach Tony Vitello, catcher Cal Stark, and first baseman Blake Burke. Coach will make an opening statement, and then we will go into questions, raise your hand, and we will pass the mic back to you. Coach? Yeah, I mean, you're in a, uh, obviously it's a little different weekend, but we, we kind of say it in, in our conference, you're, you're in a three-round bout. And uh, you're going to have to take blows and, and give blows. And, and obviously, uh, we were fortunate yesterday. But today, they delivered a couple more blows than we did. And, and thrilling for the fans that were one away from being in a really good position. Uh, but it didn't happen that way. So we'll roll into Sunday, um, which is always an important day. And, and be one-to-one -one and, and get after it. Questions will start with Karthik, row three. Tony, you guys uh, had three hitless innings for them to start off the game. And then the fourth, fifth, sixth inning, I think they had like 11 hits for 10 runs. What do you feel like changed after the first three innings? Um, you know, I don't, I don't think anything drastically changed. I mean, they got a good lineup, and uh, they're certainly going to compete. At no point are they ever going to go away easy. Um, so they were able to put some things together. And, you know, you go back, and anytime you make decisions with pitching, if it, you get some zeros or ones out of the deal, um, then it went well, and, and maybe you made some accurate decisions. And if it doesn't, then maybe we could have made some better decisions in those situations. Sam, row four. Coach, throughout the season, you had many, like treating this like a weekend series, you had many Sunday games, winner take all. How much, and you talked about how that will help you when it comes to tournament play, how much do you think that will benefit you going with your season on the line tomorrow? I think it's a benefit. I mean, you got the series on the line is what you got. And, um, you know, it helps to have a vision of what it looks like, and it, it helps to have reps. Um, you know, you can think any sport you want, but uh, you want as many repetitions as possible. And the one thing about practice is it's tough to put yourself in a practice or training situation where you can replicate um, things like today or things like tomorrow or other, other opportunities we've had on game day that you could talk about. So uh, no question it's a benefit. You both speak to what you saw from Drew there, those first couple of innings, and then maybe what spiraled for him those last couple of innings. Yeah, it was uh, for, from my perspective, it was you know very sharp early on. Um, I think the biggest thing, you know, a couple times, you're trying to be careful with guys, and um, you know it gets sideways, whether it be with a base open or particular situation. And I, I can't speak for Drew, but that's you know the only thing that really stood out to me. Yeah, no, I thought he looked good early on. Um, you know, I thought he made really good pitches. Um, just couldn't find that put-away put out, put out, put pitch. Um, and that's just how it goes sometimes. Cal, what gives you confidence that this team will respond well tomorrow and get it done? Um, you know, like, like we've talked about, um, we've done it. <clears throat> we've been in a lot of one-on-one -on -one series throughout the year. Um, so, you know, we, we know what it looks like. We know, we know how to treat the game, uh, stuff like that. So just keep that uh, same mentality coming back to the field tomorrow. Hey, Tony, um, with the way that your runs came early, do you think that that impacted the at-bats in the middle innings, trying to swing too hard maybe? Nah, they, they switched pitchers, and, um, you know, it took us a minute to adjust to making a guy get in the zone um, and then also the tempo, tempo of what he had going on. Um, so if anything, you'd like to look back and maybe adjust a little quicker, have a plan immediately uh, who you're facing. Um, but other than that, I, I don't think there was anything to detract from that. You'll take runs any way you can get them. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice if there's some guys on base when you hit homers, but it's the first inning and it went down the way it did. Um, kind of a unique situation. Paige, then back to Ryan. Um, Blake, yesterday Hunter said that the mindset really is just to keep the foot on the pedal and then offensively something will change. Obviously in the ninth inning, you know, you're getting the crowd awake over there at second base. Just kind of how much did you guys lean into that mindset to give yourselves a chance in the ninth inning and how important is it to make that transition maybe earlier in the game tomorrow? Um, I feel like we always have confidence that it's we're one inning away. One inning away and uh, I mean, when we got some runners on that last inning, we, we kind of had that confidence going in there. And uh, I feel like we just need to have better at-bats throughout the game tomorrow uh, for us to have a good chance. Tony, what, what did you see being the differences in the at-bats from seventh and eighth inning to the ninth inning? Um, for our guys, yeah, I, I think forcing 
you know, forcing uh, the pitching into the, into the strike zone 100% was, was a big difference. And then a little bit of adjusting, you know, where you're trying to strike the ball, you know, above, below, whatever it might be. Uh, but I think the biggest thing was commanding the strike zone as best as you can at, at the plate. Being the gentry. Tony. Xander's leg, I guess, after the line drive he took last weekend going into tomorrow, and, and kind of what do you envision pitching-wise for tomorrow? Yeah, he's good. I mean, he um, he obviously took that shot, was pretty good, and, and was bruised the next day. But it was kind of, you know, that Monday it was all laughs, at least. I don't think it was laughs for him, you know, when it occurred. And I'm sure it stiffened up at some point. But that's kind of been a non-issue uh, for the week. And, and um, that's our guy in the locker room. It's our guy on the field, uh, so he's got the ball, and we'll worry about the rest later. Uh, but I don't think we've done anything to gas anybody out uh, this particular weekend. Tony obviously came up short there at the end, but how important do you think it was to, to get that rally going in the ninth? You also forced them to make a, a pitching change there at the end and maybe get some momentum for tomorrow. More, I mean, you'll take a win anything, anytime you can get it. Um, so I'm sure they're elated on their side, but it, it helped more than our guys. Our guys are too young and they're too competitive and they're upset right now um, that they get left on deck or they could have made some damage. But um, when it is a true th three round bout or a, a true series in the SEC, every little thing counts. And uh, fortunately this year we had benefited from it, but there's also some series where we made it tougher on ourselves um, or you know not able to come up because of you know different pitches or innings that are involved in that. They all have weight to them. Um, obviously, the game ended in the ninth inning, but I think it helped more than our, our players will even know. Eric, far left in pace. Cal, I know you guys always have confidence in, in all your guys, but Xander's pitched so well of late. Um, what gives you more confidence that he can come through again in this you know, do-or-die situation? I mean, like we talked about earlier, the 1-1 series, you know, he's been the guy to throw on him, um, so he knows, he knows what it's like. Um, and and he's been he's been that guy um, every time we've had a, a series on the line. So that knowing that just gives me gives you know the whole team just an extra boost of confidence that he can go out there and, and throw it well. Um, Tony against Southern Miss, you mentioned that maybe you brought too much attention to the dugout yesterday. Evansville thought they weren't loose enough. Kind of felt like the scripts flipped a little bit today. Did you feel that there was tension in the dugout that got in the way until that ninth inning? Um, not for us. I mean, I think frustration at certain points um you know you want to be winning the game and there's kind of a flow to it but you know uh you're out there during bp i mean to me both times they've showed up to the park loose anytime i've seen them on video and then i think that's you know kind of a unique thing about our group is they, they play with a lot of intensity but for the most part you know are mature enough to to manage that and, and, and stay loose uh, so each game's got its own flow to it and there's ups and downs throughout the course of the game um uh, but if anything, I'm trying to follow these guys' lead as opposed to direct them. That's kind of how this year has gone, fortunately. Well, you guys being the number one team in the country all season long is the same narrative. Does tomorrow's game weigh a bit more than for you guys? Meaning, you know, if you guys lose, it could be uh, another unsuccessful season for you guys? No, I mean, there's no way it's not a successful season. And the whole, you know, basically the way the numbers go is we don't need to worry about anything other than and then tomorrow, but the, the numbers go, I want to play at home. Um, you'd like to be playing, first of all, in a regional, and then if you can, you'd like to be playing, and if you're fortunate enough to get to a super regional, then it's a race to two wins, and that's really all it is. And you, you could, if you're bored and you're on your phone too long or uh, you get involved in social media chats, which will be up for you all, not our players, you could paint all kinds of different pictures tomorrow. Uh, but really what it is is, we're fortunate to host Evansville, one of the best teams in the country, and we're trying to win the series tomorrow. Last two, Casey, then Ryan. Coach, you mentioned how every game has a flow up and down. How much of momentum would you say is in your control and is in this team's control, and how much of it is just kind of a little bit up to chance? Uh, I, I don't think much is up to chance. I mean, um, the old you make your own breaks, but I think uh, what's important is for guys to look to the guy next to them, right or left, front, forward, back, whatever it might be, um, and understand that you got to play for that guy. Um, it's very easy when stakes are quote unquote high or there's emotions going on or our fans are standing on their feet to reflect inwardly and kind of worry about what you got going on yourself. Uh, the best way to be a good teammate and play a team sport is to have that energy go outward and make sure you're looking after your guy, whether it be Cal looking after for Blake 
or vice versa because Blake knows Cal's got his back. And so that's what I think you can control. And uh, the results may go up and down, but when you got a group of guys who do that, then it makes it a fun environment. And it also makes it an environment where you've slightly put the, or more than slightly put the percentages in your favor. Tony, I'm assuming it was the leg soreness for CMO to have him DHing. Do you anticipate him being the same tomorrow or possibility he could back to second? No, he'll play second base tomorrow. And yeah, his, his leg was sore, um, it's a little iffy. And um, that was the decision that was 100% the way to go today. And the decision tomorrow will be to play him at second base. So that'll be 100% the way to go.